Hello, everybody. This is our second episode of 20 Minutes with a Pro. Uh, today we have uh, Jeremy Colin, aka P. Germ, here. I'll have you uh, like introduce yourself. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, Jeremy Colin here from Charlotte, North Carolina, and the United States of America. Getting ready for the 2022 disc golf season and uh, brought to you here in my living room with my nice mini setup here. Little, uh, we have the blueprint of the first disc golf basket and a frisbee pie tin over here and happy to be a part of the uh of the show glad to have you here as well uh we've all seen your mini wall already it's it's like a <laughs> like it's a phenomenal uh, yeah exactly you, you can see it everywhere basically already nowadays um how has the year started off for you well i'd say without a shadow of a doubt it's been the busiest off season if you want to call it an off season uh, that i've ever had um just being a part of more um, projects in the future just requires a lot more uh, consideration and planning. And um, it's just been been pretty wild. Uh, my fiance and I have uh, decided to go on the road together this year. So I um, bought a new vehicle. I got a new truck. So that way I can tow um, a, a fifth wheel RV so that we can bring our two dogs and the whole family with us on the road this year. And um, it's really nice, but there's a lot of a lot of uh, logistical uh, hoops that we've had to jump through to get all that sorted out. And, you know, COVID was pretty crazy here during the winter and we both got COVID. So that was a whole journey. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of things that have been uh, new experiences for all of us. And uh, it's been very wild a uh, couple of months. It, it's it's kind of crazy. It's only been three and a half months since the season ended and it feels like it's been a year mm -hmm. uh, so we're really excited to get, get back on the road and get back to doing jomas and go back to playing tournaments and seeing all my best friends and traveling the country and doing what i've done ever since i've been an adult yeah definitely love it as well and you know it's good to hear that you are uh, getting more uh, more into this season and you get the uh, new life rv and and you know or just uh, living living spaces and it's uh, and you get to take the whole family with you. Yeah. It, you know, you, you miss, you miss not having your family with you on the road. And so, you know, like the only solution there is, is to bring them all with you. And you know, the, there's the, uh, the touring van, which a lot of the pros are traveling in, but they don't have two 50 pound dogs. And so mm. the space gets really limited when you've got two people, all the stuff that you need to have with you on the road for any given situation and then two dogs. So the decision to go to a, a big vehicle that could, that could travel with all of us comfortably was a, uh, was a big decision and was really expensive. So thank you for buying Thunderbirds. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a few myself, so <laughs> it's, it's, um, but it's cool to hear that you guys are, uh, you know, getting ready for the season. Have you, have you yeah. managed to take any time off during this off season and just take a rest? You know, I guess you could say, say that, but it doesn't, hasn't really felt like a rest. Uh, Jules and I have mentioned many times that this off season, was supposed to be about like rest and has not really uh, turned out to be that way. Um, but that being said, like we've still managed to go visit friends in Pensacola, like Eric and Tina. And we saw Paige and Alyssa's house when they, right before they moved in, right after they bought it. Um, so we spent time in Florida. We visited her family in New Jersey, which is about 10 hours North of here in Charlotte. Um, we visited my mom in West Virginia, which is about five hours North of here. Uh, and then we did the disc golf uh, camp vacation in the um, in the Virgin Islands in St. John a couple weeks ago. So there's been a lot of travel. It hasn't been a lot of like rest in one spot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're on an island getting sunburned in winter. So, I mean, like, I can't complain about that. It was pretty amazing. Um, but it, it's not necessarily rest because I was a uh, camp counselor so i had to like i had disc golf instruction every morning and so it, you know we're working but at the same time we're having a good time working so it doesn't really feel like traditional sense of what you think work is yeah. um and it's not the traditional sense of what rest is either but at the same time um we're not traveling from city to city across the country we're not playing a tournament every weekend so in that way it's our bodies are resting but at the same time our minds are not mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's how how it is, and of course, COVID you know puts a puts a stop to all of that as well. And we had it uh, here, you know, just uh, like last last in the early this month as well. 
But uh, yeah. good to hear that you at least got some sun during these winter times. Uh, you know, it's it's always been uh, very very like uh, busy, like you said. It's always been really busy off season. So yes, you most likely have heard that as well. This year, amazing news coming out. Every every company. What are your uh, your thoughts about that? And everybody changing their sponsorships and so on. I think it's a lot. I think that. Um, DGA is going to get the attention that they have been wanting for a long time. I know that they've been making a push for players to join their team and to actually establish themselves as a major manufacturer for a while. And they're going to have the chance to shine this year. Um, I know DD, obviously, with huge acquisitions with Kona and Ricky and Mason and Valerie Mandahano, like that's those are big deals for those companies. And um, it kind of it's a good thing for the sport. I you know having the shift of power, not necessarily be Innova and Discraft one, two unquestionable to have DD back in the mix, to have latitude and like all the companies, MVP, DGA all have great representation on the top line really allows for the sport to not necessarily be so top heavy and monopolized by the, the two biggest manufacturers. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I think that it's a sign of where the sport is going and the the sport is taking us to a, a new prosperous place and no no longer the days of uh, contracts that don't really represent the talent and attention and the value that the players that are on the road working hard representing the product in the best possible way bring to the companies and um it's it's a good thing to see you know obviously i hate losing ricky and kona and mason and and you know Andrew, why are we like Innova took a hit as far as our team goes, but you know, I'm happy for those individuals because it is, it's a sign of people are getting their value. There's new sports agents coming in to present the players. And that's the end that our sport is becoming standardized, legitimized. And those things only do wonders for the upcoming talent, the next five, 10, 15 years. You know, these guys are going to be, these guys and girls are going to be playing for incredible contracts and it, it gives people something to shoot for. And it, it's really, it's really amazing to watch it all happen. Yeah. Yeah. We have, you know, had the same like ideas here and we are really happy to hear everybody is getting, you know, acknowledged and, and getting, uh, getting out there. And, and, um, you know, when we talked with different people, they said as well that, you know, 10 years ago, it was really a struggle traveling around and, you know, choosing what tournaments to participate. But nowadays, you know, everybody has decent sponsorships and, and can participate the most important tournaments wherever they are, basically. And and then that's, that's, in my opinion, it's very good and it keeps the level of disc golf very high as well, uh, of course, um, wherever the tournament is ongoing, I think. Um, but what yeah. what's your season plans like uh, this year? When is your when your first tournament? Uh, what tournament are you looking forward to the most? Well, I uh, obviously I'm really looking forward to the very next tournament because it's Las Vegas Challenge. It's my it's the first tournament of the season for me, and it's not necessarily because I love the the course is fine. I mean, as far as golf course design. You know, sometimes you just have to take what you're given and the Wild Horse Golf Club, uh, it, it's, you know, relatively pretty wide open. So you, you deal with a lot of wind, you deal with a lot of long open shots, you deal with a lot of baskets on hills and roll away putts and out of bounds and whatnot. And it, it, it's just a fun event because it's all of our friends gathering together again. And it's the beginning of a season of unknowns, you know, like, who would have thought last year meeting up at Vegas that James Conrad would have, would have thrown in the holy shot or <laughs> Jennifer Allen would make the putt from 120 feet to win Masters Worlds or this thing or that thing, you know, Kyle Klein winning his first tour event, Adam Hammes emerging on the pro scene, winning a disc golf pro tour in a national tour event. You know, like that's the, that's the beauty of meeting up in Vegas is all these things are yet to unfold and it's the beginning of all of it. Um, so I really enjoy Vegas for that, but, you know, I really start to really settle into the season towards the end of the season. I really love when the tour comes back to the East coast, which is, uh, matches the style of play that I really enjoy. Um, you know, Maple Hill smugglers notch, you know, for the green mountain championships, obviously the season ending in rock Hill, South Carolina and in Charlotte, 
you know, I live in Charlotte. So mm. having Rock, Rock Hill is 30 minutes from Charlotte. So the USDGC takes place usually on or around my birthday week in my hometown, the biggest event of the year, all of my friends and everyone's in my hometown. So we usually get together and have some sort of party. And it's just, I really look forward to the end of the season as exciting as the beginning of the season is as well. I really like getting back into the woods and obviously finishing the season at Hornet's Nest Park. The course that I learned how to play disc golf on is, is pretty amazing. So I really look forward to qualifying for that every year and staying as sharp as I can, uh, staying in the top 32 players on the tour, getting the privilege of playing in that event is a, is a big honor. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's um, you know, I, I bet it's very awesome to have birthday and, you know, that big event in your hometown with basically every, every like player in the world and every, every person, you know, with, you know, no matter if they're from US or Estonia are most likely over there by that time. And you can invite everyone over. Yeah. Basically, it's, it sounds amazing. That's right. <laughs> a big bash. Yeah, exactly. It's a good time. So I, I assume that's one of the you know the biggest events that you are always waiting for as well, especially it's, you know in your home country and uh, you know I mean near your home and and, and your birthday as well. Um, but you're not planning on doing any smaller tournaments before, just like a warm up or anything. Um, yeah, well, not not before Vegas, um, but uh, I've got a couple smaller events sprinkled in throughout the season mm -hmm. that are just fun, fun events for the soul just things that that you know when you're on tour or when i've been on tour in the past it and and the experience i think a lot of my colleagues have over time is that week in week out you're doing the same routine and you're playing for money on a high level against the best players in the world it becomes strenuous and some of the fun that brought us to this place that got us through the beginning phases, the advanced phases, the so on and so forth, all the way up to playing pro and then doing it professionally for a living, we lose some of this, we lose sight of some of the, the fun aspects of disc golf, which brought us to that place. So having a fun event put in that is not about money, that's not about top level competition. It's all about bringing it back to the basics, bringing it back to the camaraderie with you and your, your, your peers. and having fun and being silly and not being so concerned with every single throw as if every single throw represents you, you can just go out there and do your thing. And, and sometimes you, you recapture the fun of disc golf and that actually makes you better disc golfer. And so having those events planned every once in a while is a really good thing to do for your schedule. So that way you don't get burnt out by the end of the season and start to resent what you love yeah definitely it's it's you know it's a heavy mental game and that's what we have noticed um you know on every level that it's 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 more mental game than everyone can actually think about and you know having those fun events in there all is, mental it's all like mental, yeah, exactly. mental i mean like at a certain point the the skills between a ricky waisaki eagle chris dickerson calvin heimberg you name it um Adam Hammes, Kyle Klein. I mean, the, the list is getting bigger and bigger every year, right? The, the skill level between those guys is no different. We've all honed our games pretty much our entire lives to the point now where understanding how to throw a disc isn't the, isn't the challenge. Mm -hmm. We can all do it. Are our bodies physically ready? That's, that's the only thing that we can physically do make sure mm -hmm. that our bodies are physically ready because after that it's all mental preparation 100 percent mental preparation and so when it comes down to the tour event and you see who's doing well certain weeks you look at the course you look at the style of the course challenges and you see who does well in this style and that style and you see what makes them feel at ease and you can recognize that there's certain patterns obviously you have certain players like Macbeth and waisaki who have been for the last decade, they've done well on every style of course because they're so phenomenally gifted. But then like there are certain players like I would throw myself into being more of a, a wooded technical style golfer that that's usually where I, I do the best. And then you have styles that are more open style that you have players that the big guns that mm -hmm. feel more comfortable in that environment. And so that's related to the comfort level because out in the open, I can hang with anybody. I can throw just as far as they can, but centering my focus and being meant at the place of comfort and ease isn't I don't it doesn't translate as well for me just because it's not my natural environment 
And uh, it, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm fascinated by that, the psychology mm -hmm. of all of it. Yeah, definitely. And this is something that we have noticed as well. And people tend to have their own methods, how they play. Like you mentioned, wooded courses. I'm the same way. I don't have the most distance and I like to play wooded courses because I like to throw forehand as well. And, you know, that usually tends to be a little bit more preciser in the, in the woods and gives you more opportunities. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's, yeah. I think Las Vegas challenge is, is, is a pretty cool start to the, um, uh season it gives uh, opportunity to people to practice shots they usually don't throw maybe that much like uh, even grenades or uh you know due to the windy situations and open fields you can do a lot of uh, interesting stuff uh, in my opinion and um have you planned this year to you know play in europe any any chance as well oh every year it's number one priority for me whether or not it happens is you know it's it's it, we're just hoping that we mm -hmm. can Uh, this is the longest stretch that I've gone without returning to Europe um, since I started going in 2011. And I'm getting some, uh, I'm starting to, starting to itch back for that Europe. I, I, need, I miss my friends over there. Um, we've been fortunate enough to have a couple, yeah, Albert Tam, Silver, um, Kristen, um, you know, they've, they've done a great job of, of doing all the sacrifice that it takes to get over here because it's not easy. Um, But, uh, um, you know, aside from f a, a few players making the trip over, we haven't seen our buddies in Europe. And, you know, we're missing you guys. And, you know, we're missing being over there as well. So we're really, really hopeful and optimistic and just crossing our fingers that we can get back over there this year because I, I need some Europe in my life. <laughs> like, I miss it big time. Yeah, that, that's amazing to hear. So. I assume you have some ideas of what tournaments you want to participate this year. Um, have you planned like yeah. into into your actual schedule this year? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's all blocked off. You know, all the time for we love to go to Sula, and obviously European Open is you know another top priority. Um, I mean, that's I, I I'd like to go to Sula because I've never been to Norway, and it's mm -hmm. the only country um, in the Scandinavia that I haven't spent time in. So I, you know, and I've been in communication with so many different people from Norway over the years that have been so gracious and kind and, and asking, you know, are you coming? Are you coming and, and you know, offering help and travel accommodations and whatnot? And uh, <clears throat> the answer is, if I can, absolutely. Yes. Like it, it is so important to, to come over there. Um, and plus I got to meet the guy from game of Thrones. I mean, we got, <laughs> we got to play disc golf with the, uh, Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name right now off the top of my head, but um, but yeah, he, you know, like that the, the fact that we've got some celebrity disc golfers over there uh, in the Norway is, is is really cool. So um, super excited about that. But you know, some of my my very best friends uh, in Europe actually live in Estonia, and I'm missing them big time. I'm talking to you, Martin, Lise, Rain, uh, you know, and you know, I spent some time with Seam Isop and uh, Silver Coney and. Uh, you know, we've been able to see Albert, like I said, and Silver, uh, Silverlet, um, and Kristen. So that's been great. But like, I get down with Estonian people, man. I love <laughs> the vibe in Estonia, and I really, really, really look forward to coming back soon. Yeah, that's a <clears throat> that's an amazing thing to hear, and you know, that's what we were hoping to hear as well. That uh, you know, so many Estonian players, like you mentioned, and and not even only players. It's it's different people, like you mentioned, Rain is is old like we we call grandfather of this of this golf here in in estonia and <laughs> rain is great man rain yeah. will occasionally just drop in send me a message about something that i've posted about or he'll send me a link to his fluffy dogs or just the pictures of his dogs and like every time i come to estonia he he's you know they always they always pick me up and then i go back and then we just have like champagne glass after champagne and i'm like rain We need to slow down, dude. I can't hang with you, man. <laughs> He's champion of the champagne, and I, I love it. I always have a great time with the Rottmeisters. They're they're great people. Yeah, that's that's amazing to hear. And you know, like I said, everybody out here, not even being on this show, everybody is waiting you guys to come back and and uh, and you know to have you guys here in our backyard playing on our, on our favorite courses and uh, just just enjoy the vibe as well. What's your biggest um, like memory or a moment that you remember the brightest here in Estonia? 
it, without question, it was the ace I had at uh, Balgetaba um, on the triple mandatory hole. Having that on film was huge. And that was right in the middle of the whole big germ being the ace witness, whisper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I was always watching people's aces on film. And finally, I got mine, and um, I went on to win that A tier. And um, the the story behind that was um, really cool. I was in the middle of the Estonia, I mean, of the European Open, and I believe Silver Coney um, came up to me and said, "Hey, like, you want to play?" Um... <laughs> my, my dog just entered the room. Uh, do you want to play? Um, you want to play the Volgiadova? Do you want to stay in in Europe and for a couple more weeks? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've got a flight, you know, on Monday. I, I got to go back and play Ledgestone. And they like pleaded and they said, hey, we'll we'll take care of accommodations. We'll help you get a new flight. You know, we'll, we'll pay you some money for, for your inconvenience and we'll get you food. And yeah, the idea, the opportunity that somebody was inviting me to stay in Europe for a couple extra weeks, I was like, I don't need to play Ledgestone. Like, let's go, baby. I'm, I'm in. Let's do it. So, um, that was a no brainer for me. And I, uh, I was super happy and, and honored to stay around for a couple extra weeks and to go on to, like I said, get that ace on film. Uh, um, and, and win the a tier, it was just incredible memory. And we had a great time down in Seam Isup's place in Southern Estonia, uh, at the, it was like kind of like that farm house type of place. It was beautiful. We had a great time the whole week. And, um, really had some really great bonding. Whereas the, the major that I was playing when I was hanging out with some of the Estonians was more business related. This was an opportunity to really just kick back and like bond and have a really true authentic Estonia experience. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love the country so much. Yeah. Southern Estonia has always been like one of my favorites as well. It's always so pretty and you know, the hills, yeah, hills play well, so well on a disc golf course over there as well. In my opinion, at least, it's it's pretty amazing over there. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's always good to ace on a tournament. Um, you know, like you, it's <laughs> that was really cool. Know, I had an ace on the Baltic Baltic Championships as well last year, so that was you know you have amazing. <laughs> it's just a different feeling. Yes, uh, it is definitely. Uh, what do you think is the biggest difference between U.S. disc golf and maybe Estonian disc golf? I, I would lump Estonia disc golf into European disc golf that I've witnessed because it seems very similar in the, in the way that the tournaments are run. Um, and there is certainly a difference between the two. I, there could be a, a language barrier that I might not be picking up on the cultural differences as far as what I'm used to here in the States and what I'm used to over there in Europe. But like, when, when I go to Europe and, and I play in the tournaments, there is, um, there is a, 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 I feel like there's an attention to detail that's a little bit more quality, a little bit more prepared in Europe. That from my experience, it, it just seems like everyone that's a part of running the show is very proud of what they're putting on and they're meticulous about making sure that the details are handled. And if there's any problems that occur, they're very quick to address them and it's not to, to discredit the TDs here in America because they do a great job too. But the, the vibe that I get, it, it, it just seems more, I, I don't know if it's the right word, but it just seems like there's more of a respect to the game that, that's focused on um, and a respect to the course, a respect to course design. And um, I think that there's been a consistent level of quality course design that I, I've come to expect when I play in bigger events in Europe that I really appreciate. I, there's, a, there's a sense of confidence that I have that when I come to play an event in Estonia or in Europe in general, that um, the course design is gonna be at a top level. Um, otherwise they wouldn't promote it as being a pro level event. Um, and I think that maybe if I, if I try to break that down, I think that one of the things that you run into in the United States is disc golf has been established here for so much longer. And a lot of times you run into people who have been organizing events, courses, so on and so forth for 30 plus years, and they might be a little set in their ways. Whereas disc golf is somewhat new to Estonia and the, the growth of the sport is very fast. 
And there is a progressive nature to running events, designing courses that's taking influences from the best of the best over here in the States and implementing them into the land that you have in Estonia. So the, I think the ambition is higher. And so therefore the quality is better. And, and it might just be a part of that might be sprinkled in that I am also in a foreign land and I'm just taking everything in and really appreciating and enjoying everything. Whereas I might get a, be a little bit reluctant, maybe a little burnt out over here in the States. And it's more of the same thing, new place, different, different course, but it's the same thing. In Europe, it doesn't feel that way because you're only over there for, for a couple of weeks and you're just really embracing everything that you see. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I feel when I, when I think about Estonia disc golf and European disc golf in general. Yeah, like I, I totally get the feeling that, you know, like you mentioned in Estonia, we are uh, quite uh, quite new in sense, in the, you know, compared to US. And, you know, like you mentioned, we, you know, the people that are running the TDs, uh, they want to do their best. And, you know, like you said, over, let's say somebody has been organized tournaments for 20 years compared to maybe three or five years here in Estonia, it's a big difference. And you do it, um, you know, with a more passion, perhaps with more passion because you're so new to it. <clears throat> that's my, you know, take on it as well, at, at least. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so that's, that's, that's good to hear. And uh, I really like that, you know, we here in Estonia don't really pay attention to that too much because for us, it's, we play in this situation all the time and we don't recognize it uh, as much as we should, most likely. Sure. You, you guys, I feel like if there's one thing that I hope that any Estonian and listening to us will, t- will take from this interview is you can appreciate that you guys have really good disc golf courses. The ones that I've played at least I, I can't, mm-hmm. I, you know, I haven't played nearly as many as I'd like to, but um, they're uh, for the most part, what I've seen is really good. So appreciate that and respect the fact that the design that I have seen um, is, is such that it challenges your whole game. And if you were to do really well with the courses there, that would translate well to playing well over here in the States. Um, you know, you want to be able to throw accurate and far, you know, like let's say 150 meters is like a really long throw, but if you can get that far and be somewhat accurate at that distance and, and then, you know, obviously the closer and closer you get and you can make your putts from 10 meters and in relatively accurately and consistently, you know, maybe it's time for you to consider coming over here to the States. Like you're not, we're not, you're not going to see too much different than what you are challenged with, with the terrain, with the woods that you guys have in Estonia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely sounds cool. Uh, but let's talk about maybe your season plans this year. Um, what do you expect to achieve this year? To, you know, what are your goals? My goals are the same every year and it's just to grow as a person, um, as a, as a player, uh, you know, I continue to strive to get great finishes. I have dreams of finishing on top again on tour, but it's not, for me, it's not mandatory for me to feel like I'm doing my part in the sport. Um, so for me, I'm always just trying to be better on the course, whether I'm playing well or not playing well, I want to grow mentally and be more in control of the things that challenge me, which is the mental side of the sport. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's, it's, I've been attacking that aspect of my game since I started playing in 2006 and it still is the hardest part of the game. Um, so I just want to be, I want to represent the person that I feel like I am on the course and off the course, whether I'm playing well or not playing well. And so that's my goal every year is to get better at that. Um, and, you know, some, sometimes I do really well at it and sometimes I lose that battle. And, you know, every time I lose that battle, I, I hope to achieve a little bit of wisdom and, and learn from why I wasn't able to uh, take a deep breath or look at the bigger picture. Um, mm-hmm. But that's the stuff that, that has to do with disc golf itself as far as playing. But my goals are always to grow the sport and to continue being um, a personality uh, that people can come to and feel comfortable with. I want to be approachable. I want to be um, somebody that can be a role model for up and coming disc golfers and uh, growing the sport with commentary, 
or with what I do on the course, you know, those things all come to this, the big germ brand, right? And I want the big germ brand to be synonymous. When you think of disc golf, I hopefully you think of big germ. And when you think of big germ, I hope you think of disc golf. And, and I, I just hope to, to grow that and, and to be a part of the sport in, in any way that I can help out. Yeah, that's definitely the case. And uh, that, you know, case with you, and I think everybody sees you as the, you know, one big print that you have out there and it's the, you're, you're the funny guy and you, it's always fun to, you know, hear you commentate anything or be just in general, <clears throat> be around you. Uh, basically, that's, that's my feeling, you know, watching the putting competitions right now and, you know, watching yeah. all the Thomas, uh, Thomas uh, production uh, as well and so on. Uh, but since we're, you. you know, running a bit, you know, late already, uh, or, you know, end, end of the interview, maybe you want to say something, um, you know, get it on tape, basically, uh, just, you know, thank somebody and just get it out there. Well, yeah, first and foremost, you gotta, obviously, I have to thank Innova, um, you know, with, uh, with all these, uh, the moves that happen in the off season, it's easy to think that Innova was in trouble or something like that. Simply not the case. Uh, Innova is doing fine. And trust me, all those people who think that are still going to be throwing their destroyers and firebirds and thunderbirds. And you know, that it's, it's, uh, it's, but the, the, their support, their commitment to growing the Thunderbird brand, the big germ brand and all that. Um, has been instrumental in my career. And so obviously huge thanks to them. Um, I want to thank Pound Disc Golf Packs. Um, and I know that's not easy to get Pound over in Europe because of shipping costs. And it is a very expensive bag, but anyone who's ever held one or used one knows that they're just, it's it's really nice to have a, a really high-end product that that meets all the standards of any any level player. If you if you're a top level player, it, it's it's the best bag. If you're a casual player, you know it it's still it's the best bag too. You know, um, so it's really great working with them for going on my sixth year with them. Another round disc golf shop. Uh, I don't know how much they do with European shipping, but the I can genuinely say I've never experienced a better disc golf store than another round. And believe it or not. I could get to the to the doorstep in seven throws from my front doorstep. It's very <laughs> close, so it's very cool to have quick access to the shop. Um, and the guys that run the shop are some of the nicest, friendliest, most knowledgeable players. And if you're not following their channel, their Instagram channel, you got to go follow Another Round Disc Golf. Um, they're constantly posting ace videos. The, one of the owners of the shop is he he got like 21 aces last year and he's just posting videos like crazy. So it's a really entertaining channel to follow. Um, and uh, I guess last I'll, I'll, I want to thank my accountants, which is kind of a strange thing to say because they're not going to be doing any uh, Europe uh, Estonian accounting, but uh, LWS and um, Schaefer sports management, they're under the same umbrella. Uh, those guys have been really big for me this last season, this last off season, getting uh, together a bunch of delayed financial stuff that I, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to take care of. And without them, boy, I'd be, I'd be scrambling right now. So uh, definitely surrounded myself with some really incredible companies that, that, um, you know, I think the, the, the thing that I'm most proud of in, in what I've built with my brand is that I have not sacrificed any sort of quality with the people that I, I represent, you know, when, when, when big germ is sponsored by a brand, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar that that brand takes what they do seriously. I don't take a, a easy dollar just because it's there on the table. That's not important to me. It's working with people that take what they do seriously, that stuff I take serious. And so um, it's one of the things that I hope people recognize when, when I, you know, do give a shout out to my brands. You know, those guys are are kicking ass in the game. Yeah, that sounds good. It's in my opinion, it's it's the same thing. It's working with passionate people. It's always been um, through like a gift, basically. And you know, like you said, it it usually it's not about chasing money. It's about doing things right and doing with doing them with right people. And usually, it comes down to success as well. So, uh, but I one more one yeah. more quick picture. I actually forgot. Um, 
if you uh like these glasses here huh these um these are actually also by uh these are by johnny fly j-o-h-n-n-y-f-l-y um this these are blue blockers i don't have a prescription or anything like that but this is like really nice i'm looking at the ring light here and looking at the screen if you find yourself on a computer a bunch if you find yourself on your tablets your phones a bunch especially at nighttime you should get some blue blockers you should i, I definitely recommend it it's going to do you're going to have a lot less headaches a lot less strain on your eyes and um there's a lot of tests coming in that are showing that like over time so much time on our screen is really wearing down our our, our sensitivity in our eyes so wearing blue blockers cuts out that blue light and prolongs the life of our eyeballs and um there's styles for johnny fly they all have wood incorporated into the glasses and i just love it. it's a classy look but if you go to johnnyfly.com slash big germ i get a small kickback but you also save like 15 percent off the order um and i know that they've done a lot of european shipping in the past so if you're looking for a new pair of glasses they do prescription they do sunglasses they do blue blockers so uh it's something to consider if you guys like really good glasses i mean these are like really good hinges and top of the line acetate lenses which are like what all the highest most well-known companies are all going with what these guys have already been doing for a long time so yeah Johnny sounds Fox. sounds good i might look even myself into it you should you should <laughs> <laughs> you spend a lot of time behind pcs you know computer laptops yes. especially nowadays uh but those eyeballs man exactly uh but let's wrap it up here uh thank okay. you for being on the interview uh thank you for joining me Thank you for all the insights that you you gave us. And, you know, it was really awesome to talk to you. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on the show. And um, uh, Martin, Rain, Lise, we're getting together soon. We're going to have some champagne. We're going to joke and laugh about this. And I can't wait till that happens. I miss you guys big time.